So uh, yes. this is the fourth time I'm trying to, to record this video. So this there will be no live coding, just um, just overview, I guess. So the first time I tried to record it, I actually tried to to build something like um, the counter, right? So the uh, the amount of uh, units there. And I I, I, ha I I have a pixel phone for that, right? And uh, as it happens with probably any web project, at some point uh, it you find something that should be simple but really isn't. It's really really hard, right? So this this happens in any web project uh, sooner or later. So, yeah, uh, there is always something. So at first you start a web project and you think, okay. Uh, I will probably need some text layout and, I don't know, placing images, hovering, events, and web has all that, right? So well, what could go wrong? I, I mean, I know it has all that, but, but any, uh, something will go wrong at some point, and it will be completely unexpected, but something will uh, be wrong. So uh, in my case, it was this, that I just cannot make a 5-pixel font to draw into a 5-pixel rectangle. For some reason, I don't know what what it is. Uh, consistently across multiple browsers, I, I set the five pixel line height and everything, but it still uh, was different in different browsers. So I couldn't make it uh, consistent you know, button or label uh, with text inside, right? And because pixels are so big here, uh, it actually matters, right? So uh, even difference in one pixel, it, it's uh, well, this this word is three pixels wide, right? And this blown as uh, one pixel so it's huge it's huge and yeah so uh and another thing was that i noticed that there was some flickering when you hover over units and they get highlighted there was flickering so the unit disappears and appears in some time later and again there is nothing in the code that disappears it right so i just add a one more layer but somehow in browser implementation and I don't know, interaction of multiple systems inside the browser, I don't know what it is, right? Uh, it, it just didn't work. Uh, you're doing everything correct, but it just didn't work. So a point like this happens in any web project and uh, it happened in this uh, uh, inevitably, right? So it happened. So I decided to, to move on to Canvas and I actually, yeah, I tried to record it first. Uh, at first, uh, so I checked the basic API and again, Canvas is fine. I checked the text could be placed exactly as you wanted, right? So uh, this was uh, covered. And yeah, and uh, the first video, I, I stumbled upon the problem that you cannot scale Canvas easily with um, mm, with this, without interpolation, right? So you want this pixelated quality when pixels are not interpolated, they don't, um, uh, are not smoothed over, right? Uh, and yeah, you can do that in Mozilla and Chrome, but cannot do that in Safari, uh, as it turned out. So I had to cancel that the second attempt of the video and uh, do my research. And yeah, and uh, actually, um, yeah, it turned out you can do that. There are actually three ways to scale up the canvas. And if you scale it using CSS um, and by specifying width and height, not by transform. Uh, if you do that, uh, it will be pixelated in all browsers, right? So I figured out how to do that. And in third video, I, I tried to do exactly that, but unfortunately I press streaming instead of uh, recording and YouTube for some reason didn't record everything. It just recorded eight minutes out of the whole hour. So this is the fourth attempt uh, on that. And I will just explain what, what I wrote and I will not be live coding here, right? So uh, as you can see, I repeated uh, most of the stuff that we had in, so this is in canvas completely. There is no DOM and there is no RAM actually, right? Uh, except the hovering. So hovering doesn't work yet. Animations work and placement works and so stuff like that. So uh, yeah, as, as you can see, if you go to depths, uh, I removed the RAM completely. There is no dependency on it anymore. Uh, if you go to the index.html, you notice that there is instead of mount element diff right, there is canvas with ID canvas, and there is only element in the DOM. So the JavaScript code, closure script code doesn't add any more elements. If you inspect the page, there is only canvas and nothing else. Okay. 
No, it's, it's in, in short. Yeah, there's canvas and then there are scripts that are the closure script that. Um, yeah, so uh, for basically here, yeah, and we have uh, like uh, because we split it uh, very nicely between modules, right? Between systems uh, and entity component system, um, system uh, architecture, we only have to touch the render. And render is really simple. So we have start that basically we have this atom uh, of window size here. Let me actually let me move it. So, you know, somewhere in here, so there's a bit of global state, so there's window dimensions, there's a you know, set of images, and on resize, I basically recalculate, well, I take the same function, uh, windows dimension, I, um, yeah, I find the canvas, actually, and set the width and height for the canvas, I set width width and height through the style, again, so I set on the same canvas, I set the style and wrist twice, once inside and once uh, style and once outside. So if you look at this uh, canvas here, you will notice that it has width uh, uh, he set here as an attribute directly, and it also has width set inside the style, right? This, this is what uh, allows you to uh, scale it, right? So the width and style is actual size on a page and width in uh, attribute is inner width of this of the canvas resolution, right? Inner resolution of the canvas. Then I do transform origin and transform, which rotates the canvas. Uh, so this I do through the CSS. So there is no canvas transforms, only CSS transforms, right? So this is uh, actually for your size like this. It's, it's rotated uh, by 90 degrees over some point in, in here, so that it uh, it counts uh, in the orientation that you want. Right, then there's translate. So translate does basically it sets uh, so that zero zero coordinate is uh, top left corner of our uh, playable area here, and the background is like in zero coordinates. Right. Then we call render, and render is uh, basically just render background, render sprites, and render background is draw image that we load from uh, background.png. Right, and it draws it at minus something coordinates, so outside of this window, uh, but the canvas handle is just fine. And it, it, it's positioned so that uh, the, the center comes in the center, basically. So that's, that's the idea, right? And we draw this. This rectangle is drawn uh, using the canvas API, the stroke track, right? And it actually, I had to offset it by half a pixel because otherwise it gets blurry. So if you set uh, it like this, you can notice when it reloads, yes, yeah, it becomes blurry and it was not a good idea, so I had to do that. Um, then uh, there is render sprites that basically repeats the code that we had in sprites here, but here we had for loop, here we have instead the do sequence, right? Uh, we get all sprites, we sort them. Then we destructure them, we pick up the image object uh, from the image cache, I will show it in a sec. Uh, we iterate over each layer, and then we basically call draw image. Draw image can uh, take an image, uh, slice the part of it, and place it on somewhere on the canvas. So this is what we are doing exactly, right? And yeah, uh, there is also some translation trick, so we save the current matrix, transformation matrix here, and then translate, which translates us to the position of X and Y of the sprite. Uh, so before X and Y was to, uh, sorry, bottom left corner of the sprite, now it's uh, bottom center of the sprite instead, so that mirrors becomes easier. Okay, and yeah, and then uh, if uh, we need to mirror the, the image, we actually apply the transformation to the context, scale minus one, one. So those are mirrored. If we remove that, uh, you will see that the, the sprites will only have one picture that looks right, right? So we have to swap the drawing context so that it draws them in opposite direction. But because we are orient, orient so, oh, sorry. Uh, because they oriented uh, uh, on, like at the center, the mirroring doesn't. Uh, you don't have to recalculate the coordinate, right? So the coordinate will be like uh, from minus half the width to 
the whole width, right? Then minus height of the sprite to the height. So we from here, we basically have to go here and then here and draw from there. Okay. And yeah, there's this is this and we restore the matrix so that in that case maybe we can uh, do that for somebody else. Uh, like uh, for for next sprites we, we don't need it actually what we can do here is something like do we can do that in here because um, let me say it yeah <laughs> for each layer how do we restore them? I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's not a good idea. Okay, so what, what we have to do instead is... Oops. Maybe we should do that. Yeah, simply do that. So we iterate our layer and then we restore, right? So we just apply transformation once per sprite but we iterate our layer, we call n times this um, draw image, right? So this should be the same, but more like a little bit more efficient before because we do less transformations, but I think it's uh, not that time consuming anyways. Okay, and then we have this image cache. So image cache is, uh, the trick is the canvas when you call draw image here, it requires the image object. Image object is something that you you pick up from uh, not, uh, from a page or you create it yourself. So in our case, we created it ourselves, like here, right? Then we set uh, on load on them so that like when image loads, we call render. So it, it might start rendering before images are fully loaded, right? Uh, yeah, and in that case, well, it will render something, but when the image finally loads, each as each image loads, it will uh, re-render again and again, right? So you might, in theory, see as they load uh, one by one. Let me see if I can simulate that for you. So I have to disable cache, I guess, and maybe do some throttling like regular good CG. And I don't know if that's a good idea because it will have to load like lots of javascript dependencies and there's like really lots of them and maybe it's a bad idea actually yeah it's probably a bad idea but anyway yeah if i could just throttle images but not javascript i don't know maybe we'd see any, something uh but yeah that's the idea so we draw everything on canvas now i have to figure out how to do hovers yeah, you, you notice that they didn't appear all at once, uh, they appeared like one after the other, but whatever. Yeah, and yeah, there is it. So, uh, and we cache those images, right? So there's atoms that each time you look up the image by the URL, it tries to look it up. If it's not there, we create it, we set the search set and unload. Once you set a uh, source, it starts loading, and then we swap that image object uh, in the, uh, this uh, array and we return the image, right? So that's just simple lookup most of the time, except the first time. Okay, and yeah, so there is it. And uh, the only thing that is not covered yet is how to do this covers, right? And I will uh, dedicate next video for that. But for now, I think this is it. So I, if a YouTube video didn't the, won't come, come up like in full length, so I will have to put this instead. Uh, I hope it's good enough. Uh, the old one was probably too long anyway, so yeah, enjoy and until next time, bye bye.